Welcome, this is Darlene from HerViewPhotography.com and today we're going to do a quick lesson on how to export from Lightroom and save from Photoshop so that your images are web friendly. Um, I get a lot of people that email me photos and they send me the original photo that came out of their camera and it's quite large. So you want to make sure that if you're putting things online or emailing things to people that you downsize them a little bit because otherwise you're, you're either going to take a really long time to load online or it's going to plug up their email box something first. So in Lightroom I've just done a quick little selection here of six pictures from a little winter photo walk that we did and I'm going to export um, a couple of these out into a different size. So in Lightroom the process is export. So when you select your images you can get to export from the button down at the bottom left here or you can go up into your file menu and choose export. We're actually going to create a preset for exporting for the web. Okay, So I have one created for social media and I do them all the same size and I'll show you how I do that. So go ahead and click export if you're following along with me and your little dialog box is going to pop up for exporting. Okay, so I make sure that I choose hard drive. I don't export them myself right to the social media sites. You can um, use the publish feature of Lightroom um, or you can use the plugin. I just export them right to my hard drive and then upload them. But for today's purpose we're going to talk about what sizes to make them. Okay, so when your dialog box opens, if you want to save it as a preset, the first thing you want to do is choose export to and have this little option say choose folder later. So it even tells you that it's useful for presets so that when you go and choose the preset without clicking through this process, it'll it'll save all of your settings except which folder to put it in so that they're not always going in the same folder. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is choose a rename function. I generally do rename my files when I export because I want to have a file extension that is going to be representative of what where that file is going or how big it is. If you export everything out with the same file name, uh, you could end up writing over one by accident. So you could end up writing over a full size file with a web size file by accident. Okay. So we're going to make files today that are, we're just going to call them web. So the way that, that you do that is if you haven't got this preset already set up, you can just click this little thing here for file name and insert it. And then I'm going to just call it dash web. Okay, that's simple. So if you've already named your file something, we're not going to rename that part. We're just going to add an extension at the end, which is web. Okay, so then they're not confused with anything else. The next thing that you want to do is make sure that you are choosing JPEG format. You don't want TIFFs or PSDs or large format files out for email or web. So JPEG are the best because they're compressible. Okay, then I usually use quality around 70. The lower you go, the more um, degraded your image becomes. You'll pick up some noise, you'll lose some clarity, and the higher you go, the bigger the file is. So you have to find a happy medium somewhere in the middle. I tend to like 70. Okay? For the web, the color space that you want is sRGB. If you choose any of the others, you're going to get funny colors showing up because websites can only display sRGB. So without going into a long explanation of what those are, those are color spaces. And just know that sRGB is the smallest and Profoto is the biggest. Okay. So when you're printing, you would use one of the others perhaps, but for the web, you want this one. You can also tell it to limit your file size. So you can choose quality yourself or you can say I only want my file to be a certain size. So if for the website you want it to be under say 100 kilobytes you can just type that in. Okay. So I'm going to stay with 70%. Um, now you also have the choice of resizing. So our next part is to choose how big we're going to make our image. Okay. I usually choose long edge because then it doesn't matter if you have a horizontal or a vertical image, it's going to make them all the same size. So for my 
web output, I generally use 1024 pixels. Um, it seems like kind of an arbitrary number, but a lot of people's monitors, that seems to be a fairly common resolution, either on the height or the width. So I use that and the web will resize it down if it needs to. If you're putting these on a website, you definitely want to know the width of your website. So for example, if I'm putting them on my blog, I know that my blog is 680 pixels wide for a maximum image. So that's what I would make them, 680 and no bigger. When you have bigger files and your website has to downsize them, it takes extra time to load that image. Okay? If you're sharing on social media sites, you can make a little bit bigger. Google Plus can actually handle bigger files now so that you can zoom into them while you're viewing and get more detail. So if you have highly detailed images, you can make them a little bigger. 800 is a nice number, so let's kind of go that's in the middle. Gives you a big enough image to see. It works well for email, it works well for websites, it works well for social media. Okay, so let's go with that for today. Um, resolution, again, the web only displays at 72 dpi. Okay, so dpi and ppi are the same thing on the web. Okay, dots per inch, pixels per inch. Okay, 72 is what you want in there. Okay, if you put something else, it's still going to display it at 72 dpi. Right, so that's why sometimes you'll find that people put images up on the web and you have to scroll sideways and back and forth and up and down to see the image. If you've put up a 2,000 pixel image and your monitor isn't that wide or your browser isn't that wide, you end up scrolling to have to see it. Right. The next one down here, um, output sharpening. You can sharpen for screen. What that will do is just add a little bit of extra sharpness to your image when you when you output. Looks good on the screen, um, and you can choose low, standard, or high. And that's to your own preference. Okay. Metadata, that's the data that's included in the back end of your file. Uh, Zach was talking about things like your copyright information, your camera data. So you can have copyright only if you don't want your camera data showing, such as your aperture and your shutter speed, or you can have everything showing. I teach, so I like to show everything on my site so that people can see what I am photographing. In the other video that I've linked to about how to make a watermark, I created a nice watermark and in here I'm actually going to apply it. So I'm just going to show you how to do a watermark in Lightroom. Once you've got your, your nice watermark that you want to use, you just select this here, you check it off the check mark box, and then go down to the bottom and choose Edit Watermarks. Okay, so then once it comes up, you get to choose your image and it'll ask you for a graphic. Okay, so I already have my graphic put in there. You will do that in the upper right here under graphic. So choose your graphic and then you just get to size it, how big you want it, where do you want it spaced. So I have one that's set to 10 pixels and two away from the edge on both sides. So then I've saved that as her view, bottom left, and that's my shortcut. So HVBL, make up your own system of naming things so that you know what they are. If you have one on the bottom right, which I also do, you can save it as BR, right? And if you want to scroll through the ones that you're exporting, you can actually see where the watermark's going to land. So I think on these ones, it's actually going to work better if I go on the left, because it's kind of crossing over some of the images. So I'm going to go back to the left, scroll through them again just to make sure. And it looks good on all of those. Okay, I might actually even move it down to one and one because it's still cutting off in a few places. I don't want to take out over my image with the watermark. So if I'm happy with that, now it's going to probably ask me to save it. Okay, so it's going to ask me purview, bottom left, 10, and I'm going to say one plus one. Right? So I've saved that as a preset for the watermark. There's amazing number of places to save presets in Lightroom. Pretty much everywhere you go, you can save a preset. So if there's something that you use on a repeated basis and you might have several different settings, save that as a preset because you'll really save time later. Okay? So all I'm going to do here is show me in Finder once it's exported and I'm going to hit go. So those are the settings that I use to create my images. And of course, it's going to ask me where to save them. And I'm just going to make a new folder to put them in, and off it goes. Okay, so Lightroom is now doing its thing, and I will be back in a moment to show you where they landed. Okay, so here we are in that folder that I created, save for web demo, 
and there's the five images that I've exported and you can see that they are indeed 800 by 533 so as I scroll through you can see that each one indeed is 800 on the longest side okay? and they're about just under between 150 and 200 kilobytes each well, looks like that one's a little bit over so if you wanted them a little bit smaller, you could go back and set that limitation on size. But for our purposes, I think that looks pretty good. So let's hop over to one more method of doing that. If you are a Photoshop or an Elements user, there's another way that you can do that. Uh, I'll show you the settings that you want to do. And ultimately, you're going to create an action if you're going to do a whole bunch of them. I'm not going to get into that, but I will show you the settings to save. So I'll meet you over in Photoshop. Okay, so our image is open in Photoshop. Now, if you're working with raw files, you're going to want to downsize them a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is do an image size. Okay, so that's under your menu here, image, image size, or your shortcut on your keyboard is Alt-Command-I. I'll press that on the keyboard just so you can see how that comes up. Okay. Again, I'm going to set that to the longest side is 800. If you tick off this constrained proportions, it will set the other side automatically for you. Right? And we're going to look at pixels, which we have, that's fine. Um, resolution 300 doesn't really matter in here because it's going to only display this. Right? The only thing it's going to display is the width and the height. So that's what we're looking at. Right, so we're going to downsize this file to 800 wide. View it full size. Okay, that's that's full size. Now we're going to do a save for the web. Now, surprise, Photoshop has thought of this, and they actually have something called Save for Web and Devices. Go figure. When you open it up, it automatically zooms to 100%. Okay, you can see this in the bottom right here, bottom left. Okay, 100%. Ideally, you want to leave it there because what it's showing you is when you when you start compressing your image, okay, for example, if I choose low on this, it's going to show me sort of what kind of quality I'm losing by compressing it that much. And actually, surprisingly, I'm not losing a lot. Okay, so you might even want to go fairly high if you need small files. Okay? Most of the time, I'm around 60 or 70, like I did in Lightroom. So if I save it at a JPEG with high quality, so about a 60, it shows me that I'm going to get uh, a file which is about 89 kilobytes. Okay, so it tells me how long it's going to take to load at certain speeds, which is really handy. Okay, so once you have your sizing set up here and your quality. You can set different ones. So if I did want to compare that to something with a lower quality and lower quality again, maybe I want to save it as a different type of file. You can compare different file formats. Generally, I'm going to do a JPEG and I'm going to save it at a, around 60 quality. Right. So once you're happy with that, you just hit save and it's going to ask you where do you want to save your files. Of course, I'm going to save it in the same folder and we're, we're done. That's it. So I'm going to pop over to the same folder, have a look at the one we just saved, and let's see if it's any smaller than the other one. So the first, this one is 94 kilobytes, and the one from Lightroom, slightly bigger. So Photoshop does a really good job of compressing the image down and making sure that it's a proper size for saving for the web. These are all email friendly as well. So your friends won't get upset with you if you mail these size of images. These are appropriate for most websites, social media, and email. I hope that's helpful. If you're using Photoshop Elements, you're going to have very similar settings. They may just be in a slightly different menu. So I hope that's helped you understand sizing a little bit, and we'll see you on the internet. Take care.